Hello everyone, and welcome back to another devlog on my farming simulator. This is going to be a lighter one as I'm currently working on some much larger features, but that doesn't mean it's any less important, as I'll finally be covering the design and animation of the main character. This is especially exciting for me, because I can finally get rid of that awful white rectangle that's been plaguing all of my gameplay footage. The problem is that animation is definitely one of my weakest skills, so I struggled a bit in that regard, but I still tried to do as best as I could. To start, I wanted to determine the basic traits of my character so that I had an idea of what I would be drawing in advance. Ultimately, I decided that he would have medium-length hair, a grey jacket with a red shirt underneath, brown pants, and grey boots. For the most part, I picked clothing types and colours that would look good in the game world. So for example, his clothes are generally quite dark to contrast well with the bright environment. Otherwise, my goal was to make him look like a relatively normal person so that he's easier to relate to. I definitely changed some aspects over time, but for the most part this process was very smooth, and I was satisfied with my idea. I then made some pixel art to represent these characteristics, and slightly animated them to make an idle animation. I also made some variations for a jumping animation, which has one frame for going up, and one for going down. Both of these animations were fairly simple, so I didn't need to use any complicated techniques, and making them was relatively painless. Initially I was worried that the sprites turned out a bit too generic, but over time I grew to appreciate them more, and of course I could still add more details anytime in the future if necessary. Then I had to work on the walking animation. It's much more complicated than the others, as it has 8 frames and body parts that make big movements, so I took a much more procedural approach. I started by just animating a stick figure so that I wouldn't have to worry about the specific graphics. I like to think of this as creating the animation without its implementation. Anyway, I drew the keyframes first, and then did the frames in between. Next, I added some of the body parts, as well as primitive versions of the rest. I lastly polished everything up, and added all of the shading. The final animation turned out just as I had hoped, though I did notice that some areas, such as the arms for example, seem a bit stiff. Once again, that's something I might consider adjusting sometime in the future. This iterative approach was extremely helpful, though to be honest I still found the whole process to be kind of tedious. It's difficult to draw so many similar frames that flow together nicely, and I always underestimate how long it can take to do it all by hand. I'm sure that if I practiced animating more it would become easier, though to achieve that it'll take a bit more discipline on my part. I think I also could have gone into it with a more positive mindset, rather than just trying to finish it to get it over with. After a little bit more work, I got the animations imported into the game, and they mostly meet my expectations. There's still a few special animations I need to add, but having the most important ones done is a huge relief. While I was working on the player, I also decided to modify some of the other sprites to make them slightly better. Nothing major, just stuff like making the grass a bit softer and metal a bit shinier. It's nice to touch up graphics after I add them, because it means that I don't have to worry about making them perfect on the first go. In hindsight, I probably should have applied this approach more to the character animations. But still, better late than never. Now, I thought it would be a bit lame to only have new graphics to show, so I decided to implement a new gameplay feature to reveal as well. It actually has to do with the black rocks that now appear on the islands. They're actually meteorites. The idea is that every night a bunch of meteorites fall from the sky, and if they land on an empty piece of ground, you have the opportunity to pick them up. The final amount will be much less than what's being shown though. I haven't actually decided what I want to do with them yet. Maybe you could grind them into a powder that does something interesting? Anyway, what's important is that they're valuable to the player. This means that in order to collect more, you have to either expand your land area, which encourages you to develop the property, or have more free space, which encourages you to not fill the area with useless objects. Essentially, it guides the player towards a more interesting style of gameplay. What I like about this mechanic is that it's not particularly intrusive, but it still increases the depth of the gameplay. That essentially covers all of the new changes. Next I'm going to be continuing work on the gameplay, and in particular adding new machines and tools. So far I'm feeling very optimistic, and now that many aspects of the game are established, I expect the speed of development to increase much more. Thanks for watching. Bye.